In this video, we'll go through some calculations of areas and lengths. So we'll start with this example here. And we've got a, a quadrilateral here, but, but none of the sides are necessarily parallel or equal. And uh, the only other information we're given is that these red lines are perpendicular to each side that they come from and they all, all the perpendiculars meet at the same point in the middle here. So how on earth are we going to calculate the area of this irregular quadrilateral? Well, whenever you're faced with uh, some polygon that you have to figure out the area for, the good strategy is to see if you can create triangles in the polygon that will allow you to calculate the area using additivity. So for this irregular quadrilateral, let's see what happens if we draw a couple of extra lines. So let's draw a line here and here, and then here, and then here. And then now you should be able to see that we have four triangles. And we know the base of each triangle and we know the perpendicular height of each triangle. So for example, let me highlight one triangle. Let's highlight this triangle here. Okay, what is the area of that triangle? Well, the base is five centimeters and the height the perpendicular height is four centimeters. So the area is 0.5 times five times four, half base times height. Okay, so that's the first part. Okay, let's look at another triangle. I'll just uh, point to this one. I won't, I won't bother highlighting it, but uh, this triangle here. Okay, I've got a base of seven and a height of six. So its area is going to be a half times seven times six. Okay, and then hopefully you can figure out what the last two are. There's going to be this triangle here, which will be an area of a half times 12 times five. And then finally this one half times nine times three. Okay, so if we figure that out and do all the calculations, we'll get 10 square centimeters for this highlighted triangle, 21 for this one, 30 for this one, 13.5 for this one, if we add them all together, we get 74.5 square centimeters. Okay, let's look at this example. Notice we've got right angles in these two corners. So again, we'll use the same strategy. Let's create two triangles. Uh, there's two different ways I could do this, right? I could go from here to here make triangles that way, but that's actually not very helpful. What I want to do is make use of the fact that we've got right angles in these corners. So if I create the triangles the other way, draw the line this way, okay, now we've got two right triangles and I can calculate the areas of those using half base times height. So one of the triangles has a as a base of 60 and a height of 25, the other one a base of 52 and a height of 39. If I calculate that all out, then I get 1,764 square centimeters. Let's think about finding some lengths using the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so the Pythagorean theorem says that for a right triangle, if we square the hypotenuse, which is the length of the triangle 
on the other side of the right angle. Okay, so for illustration, here's the right angle. Opposite that is the hypotenuse, which for this triangle is 17 centimeters. If I was to square the other two sides, this one and this one, and add them together, I would get the square of the hypotenuse. Okay, so in this case, the unknown length is this one. So I'm going to have to rearrange my Pythagorean equation so I can solve it for x. So if I do that, I will get x equal to the square root of 17 squared, which is 289, minus 8 squared, which is 64. If I do that calculation, 289 minus 64 comes to 225, which happens to be a perfect square. So when I take the square root, I get 15. Okay, similar example here, only my numbers, although they're smaller numbers, they're actually a little more difficult to work with because I'm not going to end up with a perfect square in this example. So here's the calculation. X is equal to the square root of 2 squared minus 1 squared, which is the square root of 4 minus 1, which is the square root of 3, which comes to 1.732 rounded to three decimal places. Okay, this example is a little bit different. Okay, I'm given the hypotenuse, but I'm not given either of the other two sides, but the other two sides are equal. I've got an x here and another x here. It means these two sides have the same length. Okay, so now if I do Pythagoras, I'll have one squared is equal to x squared plus x squared. In other words, one squared or one is equal to two x squared. So x squared must be a half, so x must be the square root of a half. And that comes to 0 0.707 to three decimal places. Okay, last example, it's a bit of a puzzle. We're given a right triangle. Actually, we're given two right triangles. There's a small one that goes up six centimeters, hypotenuse of 10 centimeters, and I don't know what the base is. And then a bigger right triangle goes up another X centimeters from the six that we took us to here, it goes up another X up to here. And then the hypotenuse of that one is 17. Let's figure out what the base is first. Okay, the base is going to be the square root of 10 squared minus 6 squared. So it'll be the square root of 100 minus 36, which comes to square root of 64, which is good because 64 is a perfect square. B, B, the base is 8 centimeters. Okay, and now I could use the Pythagorean theorem on the big triangle. If I think about this side over here, of the big triangle, it's x plus 6. So x plus 6 will be the square root of 17 squared minus the base squared. And the base we just figured out was 8. Okay, 17 squared is 289, 8 squared is 64. So x plus 6, the side on the, on the left of the big triangle, is equal to the square root of 289 minus 64. That's the square root of 225, which is 15. So that tells us what this side of the triangle is, okay, from here up to here. Uh, but we just want to know from here up to here, here up to here. So I need to subtract six to figure out what x is. So x is 15 minus 6, x is 9 centimeters. So we'll go on in part 2 to look at a couple of length measurements inside three-dimensional shapes. <laughs>